as I'm running up from Imperial College London and for the past years I've been, uh, well first up with the Dyson Lab, but then actually from this month um, I'll be well, taking my upper position as a, as a fellow of Imperial College. Um, so today I'll be quickly, I'll just be giving you an overview of the recent work that we've been doing at the intersection of deep learning and geometry. And hopefully at the end of the talk um, you'll be convinced of two things. Firstly, that geometry is a very good signal for learning. And secondly, that we need um, both top-down and uh, bottom-up processing for our perception systems. Okay, so just a quick overview of the talk. I'll start with what we actually mean by geometry and deep learning. Uh, then I'll move on to why integrating geometry with deep learning is so challenging. Uh, and I'll be looking at two things, so uh, top-down uh, versus bottom-up inference paradigms. And then I'll argue that deep learning naturally does bottom-up uh, inference, but top-down is what we need to uh, integrate geometry into our deep learning models. Now I'll uh, look at a bit more detail of two of our recent works, uh, CodeSlam and AliceNet, and then I'll uh, just summarize uh, the key points. Okay, so what do you actually mean by geometry? So in this talk, I'm going to be taking a, a bit more general um, definition of geometry. So I'll be referring to any, well, as geometry, as any uh, mathematical expression or mathematical model that uh, imposes some self-consistency constraints between our variables. And this relation will usually be geometrical. So in the case of multiple geometry, as we're interested in in this talk, um, for example, we, usually, we would have two frames. Uh, uh, taken from a camera from a uh, different pose and uh, given the pose of the cameras as well as the position of the 3D points in our scene we can compute the expected location of the point uh, in the second frame and then by taking the, either the photometric or the, the geometric um, difference between these points uh, we can compute a, a error function uh, that we can use as a as a consistency or self-consistency relation. So uh, the geometry is doesn't only occur in in, in a multi-view sense. Um, it also arises in many other areas in vision. So in uh, it also applies to three D geometry in general. So if you have uh, just point clouds or meshes, you can also compute the point plane distance. Um, and then in graphics, we also have some self-consistency relations. For example, uh, the image formation process where you have a multiplicative uh, relation between, for example, your reflectance and shading, and you can compose these to give your image. And then there's many, many other examples as well. For example, optical flow, where you have 2D geometric relations between your uh, pixels, uh, where you don't have any 3D, uh, 3D model, but you can still set up a, a loss function based on these uh, on the 2D geometry. Uh, but then, specifically in this talk, I'll be focusing mainly on uh, multi-view geometry and specifically the reprojection error. Okay, so let's uh, get to the main part of the talk. So, what is this uh, thing called bottom-up inference? Is this, I, I'm going to argue that standard networks actually do bottom-up inference quite naturally. So bottom-up inference um, basically is when we have a model to directly compute p y given x. And in this case, y would be our variable of interest. Um, so for example, in the monocular depth prediction case, y would be our depth. And x would be our uh, observations or our inputs, which in most cases is our RGB images. So in the deep learning uh, sense, we just use a network to compute uh, p y given x, for example, a, a convolutional neural network. And during training, we just find the parameters theta of this network that can directly um, give us this, this quantity p y given x. So a purely bottom-up inference process is, is really um, convenient, but it doesn't really correspond well with real perception. And the reason for that is, Real perception systems, or biological perception systems, actually have very complex um, both feed-forward and feedback connections that are happening each time we make an, an inference. So this is where the top-down inference, the top-down approach, comes in. So I'm going to argue the top-down inference actually allows us to use geometry in deep learning to a much greater extent. So in the top-down paradigm, we have the opposite. So in this case, we actually have um, something that can estimate px given y, so the likelihood of our observations given our current estimate of the variables that we want. 
And then in order to find our y in this case, we actually have to solve an optimization problem or search for the maximum of this likelihood function. Um, so this, as you can see, is usually a lot more expensive than just the bottom-up process because we have to uh, start with some initial estimate and then iteratively refine this through some optimization framework or some inference mechanism to find our best estimate of the, of the variables. Okay. So now how, how have we actually used this uh, top-down inference into the, for this multi-view uh, geometry problem? So the first work I'm going to look at is code slab. So in this work, we're actually looking at uh, solving the problem of simultaneous localization and mapping. So that is how to determine the pose of the camera as well as the geometry of the scene um, at, at the same time. So in, the, in code slab, our uh, problem mainly well, basically consists of have given a pair of images, so RGB images, which can be taken from a sequence uh, of video. We want to solve for both the depth of one of the frames as well as the relative pose between this uh, keyframe and all the other frames in the sequence. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to do a top-down uh, inference. So we have a, a likelihood function in this case that consists of a photometric error, uh, which is computed through the reprojection, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier. And the challenge here is that we can't really do the joint optimization for our top-down inference because the depth image um, and the depth image is so high dimensional, and we need to uh, solve for each uh, pixel in that, uh, in that depth image. So our key insight in this work is actually to parameterize this B, our depth image, with the variational autoencoder, and then use the latent code C, which is a very, in a very low dimensional space, to perform this optimization. So the basic model looks like this. Uh, so the three quantities that you have, or the three um, uh, variables in the middle, uh, are part of the variational autoencoder. So uh, on the left, you have the input uh, ground truth depth image. Uh, this is uh, compressed into a latent dimension or a low dimensional code, C. And then through the decoder, this is reconstructed to give you the best um, reconstruction of the, of the input depth. Uh, then on the right hand side, you have, or well, there's two uh, probabilities or loss functions. So the bottom one corresponds to basically a supervised uh, training error which we use to train this uh, autoencoder. And it's just the, the um, probability of the uh, reconstructed depth or the, the actual reconstructed depth image given the ground truth depth image. And the um, top quantity we have is the unsupervised um, uh, unsupervised loss, which is basically the photometric uh, reprojection error interpreted as a, as a probability. So the whole model operates in two phases. The first is the training phase. So during the training phase, we just uh, train our uh, autoencoder to best reconstruct these or encode these depth images. And then during the testing phase, we simply use this autoencoder. Um, we, so we, during the testing phase, we no longer have our ground truth depth, so we only um, start basically from here onwards. And then we compute the gradients of our unsupervised loss with respect to this code and optimize the code to give us the best um, depth reconstruction, both depth and pose, that um, satisfies our photometric error. So, um, yeah, so the actual implementation, as I mentioned, uh, consists of two phases, the training phase and the testing phase. So during the testing phase, we just train our autoencoder using Adam, and then during the, during the training phase, we um, train our autoencoder using Adam, and then during the testing phase, we um, form our likelihood so the likelihood in this case is the reprojection, the photometric uh, reprojection error. Our variables are the, the pose, um, which we represent as the rotation and the translation of the cameras. And then we compute our likelihood um, term using a, a warp that takes in both the depth and our current estimate of the, um, of the pose of the images to uh, which is directly feeded then into the, the likelihood term. And then to um, perform this top-down inference, we just use a standard nonlinear least squares um, solution, so that can be Gauss Newton or um, Liebenberg or Quart. And to do this, we, we just compute the Jacobian or the, the gradients of our uh, residuals of the likelihood, um, assuming independent um, uh, terms in that likelihood uh, form. And then we update our current estimate of our state, uh, which, in, which I just uh, represented here as x. 
uh, by producing a uh, you know incremental delta x for each of these steps. So this is just an example of it actually um, in action. So this is uh, here you can see just the also encoder reconstruction as a function of the code size. As we increase the code size, we can uh, do a better a reconstruction of depth images. And at the bottom, we also just regress the uncertainty for use in optimization. And this is a 2D example of um, optimizing two views. You can see the rejection error minimizers. And this is just a 3D uh, visualization of that same process. So you can see that as, um, as we update the variables, we, we actually get a, a refinement of both the, the pose, um, so the position of these cameras, as well as the geometry of the scene. So here's just a more uh, challenging example in an indoor warehouse situation. So even with a very like uh, complex geometry, we can still get a good um, a good refinement of this, of both the, the pose and the depth variables. And we can also apply this to uh, more than two cameras by just adding more frames into this um, yeah, in, into the formulation. And then if we want to uh, apply this to a video sequence, we can just uh, apply it over a sliding window of frames, and we get a sort of a visual geometry type um, uh, estimate. Here's just some more uh, example from NYU data set. So the one uh, major advantage of using this uh, compressed or latent dimensional representation of the depth images is that we actually capture a very good prior of um, the geometry of the scene. And this allows us to, um, to basically uh, cope with the rotational only motion um, where traditional slab systems uh, would fail or find very difficult because they don't have, um, uh, basically, if you only have rotation, you, you don't get any disparity and you can't uh, you know, solve for the depth without any prior information. Okay, so then we move on to the next, our next work, which is LSNet. So in the coast lab approach, which I, which I just described, we consider the optimization and um, the training process as uh, two completely separate things. So in AliceNet, we actually uh, integrate this top-down inference or iterative um, optimization as part of our learning. So in this case, we actually have the optimization of, as part of our computation graph, and we uh, will train this whole unrolled uh, model end to end. And this allows uh, the iterative refinement steps then to be learned uh, by, our, by our network. So how this works um, is uh, and so this is the basic model. In, in this case, we actually, because we're training through the optimization, we can, uh, we can actually learn to condition the updates uh, better than just using a standard uh, Gauss-Newton update. So that allows us actually to um, circumvent the need for having this low-dimensional or compressed uh, code for doing the optimization. So in this case, you can see we only have our um, RGB inputs and we have our, uh, our estimated uh, depth variable. And then again, we have the same two uh, loss functions, one supervised and one unsupervised, uh, corresponding to our photometric error. And then, so during training time, we uh, compute, the, compute the gradients of both of these um, losses uh, with respect to our, our network parameters. And in this case, we actually unroll um, our iterations in this network and then train through the entire process. So what the unrolled model looks like is something like this. So it looks a bit complicated, but I'll, I'll just, um, it's not really that complex. So what is happening here is we have our, our input RGB pair. We get an initial estimate of our depth and pose variables. Um, and then using that initial estimate of our of our depth and pose, we can compute our reprojection error, um, the gradient of our reprojection error, and we can compute an update um, uh, based on that uh, gradient, which we then use to update the, the our current estimate of our variables, and then we just continue this process for uh, you know for a few number of iterations until we get uh, our final refined um, estimate at the end. 
So how we actually do these updates, um, so our post parameterization is walking everything is the same as in, uh, in PostLab, as I showed you before. However, in this case, uh, we unroll our uh, updates for a few steps, as I mentioned. Our Jacobian is computed in the same manner, but the major difference in this case is that our, our updates to our state, delta x, are actually given by a learned um, network model. So uh, in, in this case, that network just takes in our Jacobian, as well as the, the residuals, or the, the likelihood of the function, and it computes our del delta x for us. And then our whole, this entire model is trained end-to-end -end using um, SGD or Adam. So here's some examples of that um, in action. So these are, this is just a like 1D uh, perfecting example. So you can see our learned um, inference model or uh, optimization model uh, converges much quicker than the standard uh, gauss newton And then here again are some examples of applying this model to optimization of the depth and, and pose. So in this case, um, well, what you see in the, in the center is just the 3D rejection of our, um, you know, of our estimated uh, geometry. The, uh, well, the, the white uh, frustum is the keyframe uh, for which we are estim currently estimating the depth for. The green one is the uh, live frame. And on, on the right, you can see the, the current or the depth uh, image that's being refined uh, through the iterations. And then the bottom here is just the, the live frame, uh, which is the current frame for which the pose is being estimated. So you can see in this case, because we're not going through this, um, this low dimensional or compressed representation, we can actually get much um, sharper estimates of the geometry of the scene. So the, the edges and the uh, the boundaries of all the, the objects are much sharper than in the, in the coastline approach. These are just some two frame examples again, um, taken from a video sequence. You can see the um, by using the photometric uh, feedback, you can actually get quite um, so the sharp edges, like flat planes, and you preserve all the, the fine details and objects and um, smaller uh, things in the scene as well. Okay, yeah, so um, just a quick summary of uh, what I covered. So, uh, and we saw that deep learning naturally uh, performs bottom up inference. However, perception actually requires a combination of top-down and um, bottom-up processing. However, top-down inference is quite challenging, and that's mainly because we need to perform some op op uh, optimization or iterative updates on our um, current estimates of the state variables. Uh, and top-down inference can be used with uh, deep learning models. So I looked at two ways in which we can do this. So the first is um, how we can learn a compressed representation to aid the optimization, as in our code slab approach. And then the second is how we can actually learn the optimization updates so we can um, or get updates that are more well conditioned than what we would from a standard uh, Gauss-Newton or LM approach. And in future work, um, we want to look at, or we encourage everyone else to try and um, find uh, applications of these ideas to other domains. So I think it opens up quite a, um, a few, you know, lots of different areas of um, possible uh, improvements or research. And then we also want to look at a more general framework. So maybe um, one way we could just specify some uh, likelihood, uh, give it some data, train the model, and we can automatically get um, you know, both a top-down and um, bottom-up estimate for our, or solution for our problem. Um, yeah, that's, that's all. Thank you.